All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to be covering some of the background properties and color and border properties of elements in CSS. And these relate to block level elements, and they kind of relate also to the CSS box model that we looked at throughout the HTML series. Now, in order to set this up, I actually want to switch out my HTML. Instead of having a header one tag, I'm gonna switch this to a div tag, which is a division tag. I want to switch that out because the header one tag has quite a bit of default CSS being applied to it. It's large, it's bold, and so I want to kind of eliminate those things and just switch this to a div tag. So if I save and come back and refresh my browser here, you can see I just have this little default div. You actually can't even see it, and the text is just the normal size. Now I also need to come to my CSS file and change my selector. I can no longer select the header one because it does not exist, so I need to switch this to the div. And I'll delete all these font properties as we're going to be working with the border and background properties in this series. So let's do a quick test to make sure this is still working. I'm just going to change the color to red and save and refresh. And you can see, in fact, that color does change red. So we're good to go. Now I'm going to remove that property. I just wanted to make sure that we were still linked up. And let's start off with some of these border and background colors. Now the very first thing we're going to look at is what's called background. So if I say background dash color, I can set this equal to a hexadecimal value. And I'll just do, I'll just do a color for now. Let's just say orange. And we'll save and come back here and refresh. And now you can see how that element is completely orange. And this helps illustrate the box, or rather the block nature of the division tag. You can see that it's a block tag because it occupies this entire line. Whereas before we actually couldn't see that, but now with the background color in place, we can see that. All right, next let's go ahead and add a few more properties to this. So now that we have that background color in place, we can see it. Let's add in a border. So what we want to do is we want to say border, and I'll just say five pixels, solid green. And we'll save that and come back here and refresh our browser. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, but you can see I do have that five pixel green border. and this will help us illustrate the box model again. So I'm going to say padding, and I'll set that equal to 10 pixels. Remember, the padding is the space in between the text and the border. So when I refresh here, that creates a 15 pixel space all the way around. And let's go ahead and add some margin. Let's say 20 pixels. Margin is the space outside. So if I reset, refresh here, I have a 20 pixel space outside of the box. So you can kind of see some of those properties now come into play. Now this border property I did was CSS shorthand. This first value is the size, the second value is the style, and the third value is the color. So I could actually break this up into multiple properties, but it gets quite a bit messy as I'll illustrate now. So I'm gonna delete this border rule, and I could say border-top, five pixels, solid green. And I can, I'm just gonna copy and paste this four times down and I'll change this one to right. I'll change this one to bottom. And I'll change this one to left, just to illustrate how you can have each of these be different. Uh, each, the border can be different for each side. So I'll say green, red, purple, and pink. And we'll save and refresh. And you can see each of those borders does give a different color. And something you can see unique here is that borders, they split the border right down the middle. Instead of just squaring off, they actually split the border. Now, the middle property here, the style, is also different. I can have uh, ones called grooved. So let's save and refresh that. That actually doesn't work inside of here. Let's switch it to dashed. Dashed is an option. This will give it kind of a dashed line. If I was to zoom back out smaller here, this would, let's actually set that to the bottom border. It might be a little bit easier to see there. Dashed and save and refresh. You can see that's kind of a dashed cutout line. But there's several options here for the style. And then the size, obviously 5, 10. I can set this weight. I'll set this one to 15 and refresh. And now that's a 15 pixel border. So that kind of illustrates how you can change each of the borders independently from one another. And it gets a little bit more complicated if we were to do these without the shorthand method. So without shorthand, I would have to say border dash color, and I would set that equal to five pixels. 
or I would say border dash color dash top. Actually, I think it might be border dash top dash color and set that to five pixels. And, and let's just assume I'm working with this one right here. I would have to say border dash top dash style and set that to solid and border dash top dash color and set that to green. So again, this is the longhand version where this line would be the shorthand version. You can see our shorthand is quite a bit easier to work with, but that's essentially how we can use all these different border properties to manipulate the lines on our borders. So let's go ahead and delete all of this. It got a little bit messy. And I'm just gonna take this back to a single line here. And I'll just say border five pixels solid blue. Let's save and refresh there so we can just have a nice easy border to work with and I'll zoom back in there. All right, so that's the border property. Um, we have a padding and margin on that. We have a background color. Now let's look at a few of the additional background options that I can do. Not only can I add color to a background, but I can also add images. So in order to get the images set up, we need to make sure we have our images in our folder. So let's go back to our desktop here and make sure we have our site set up. Now I've got these two files, my CSS and my style sheet inside of this my site folder. And if I open up my resources, I actually have an images folder here with this flower.jpg. So we're gonna be using this image uh, reference. So we need to remember our file paths from the previous HTML essentials series. And to do this one, it's called the background dash image. And then we say URL. And then inside of these quotation marks is the path to the image file. So just like we would do in HTML, except this is via CSS. So I'm currently working on my CSS sheet. So I need to first go into underscore resources. So underscore resources slash once I'm inside of here, I need to further dive down into the images folder. So we say images slash. And then once I'm in the images folder, I just simply reference the file name I'm after, which in my case is flower.jpg. You'll need to pull out your own image. And that should work. Let's save and come back and refresh now. And everything went black here. So that tells me that either the image is very large or I can only see the very top. And you'll see here that actually this image just is black at the top. So it did in fact load the image, but I'm only seeing the very top most part. Now to see the entire image, I need to increase the size of my div. So I can simply say height equals, and I'll just make it not equals, colon 600 pixels. And let's say width 500 pixels. Let's save and refresh this. And now you can in fact, see that image. And I'm going to zoom out here a little bit to illustrate something else that's happening. You can see that this image is doing what we call tile. It's tiling from left to right and it's tiling from top to bottom. In other words, it's repeating everywhere. If I was to make this box even bigger, let's maybe go 900 by 900 and save and refresh. You can kind of see it even tile further. So the default behavior of background images in CSS is they tile. They go every which way. And I can manipulate this um, behavior with a few additional properties. So let's look at those next. The first one is what we call background dash repeat. And there's a few options in here. The default repeats everywhere, but I can override that and I can say no dash repeat. You spell that right. And save that and refresh. And this will only give me one image. It won't repeat. And you can see that background color is in fact still there. So the background color is behind the background image in CSS. I can set this equal to repeat X, repeat dash X, and X refers to the X axis, which is the horizontal axis. So when I refresh here, it'll refresh horizontally. I can switch it to repeat dash Y, and it's gonna repeat along the Y axis, which is up and down. And that's how I can control the repeating nature of background images. So I'm going to set this back to no dash repeat. And we'll look at this next property. Now the position of this image is also overridable with CSS. By default, it's up at the top left hand corner of my box. And I can move that around via the property background dash position. 
Now this background position is a little bit goofy in the values that it takes. So I'll just kind of quickly mention a few of them. It can either take keywords or it can take percentages or it can take pixels. So first I'll show you the uh, percentages this can take, or not percentages, the values this can take with keywords. So I might want to say right space bottom. Now what this is going to do, it's going to align it to the right side and then down to the bottom. So I would expect this to appear down here in the bottom right. So let's refresh and it does in fact appear down there. Okay, now let's switch this to right dash top and save and refresh and it appears at the top right. Let's switch this to left top. That's the default. And then we can also switch this to left bottom. And then it's down here. So the first value is whether it's on the left or right hand side and the second value is whether it's on the top or the bottom. Now, instead of doing these, you can also use percentages. I can say zero, zero, and that is going to be top left up here. I can say zero, let's actually move it to the top right. I can say 100% and zero, and that's gonna be 100% to this side and zero down. And I can say 100%, 100%. And that's going to be 100% over this way and 100% down this way or bottom right. And I can also say 0%, 100%, which is going to be bottom left. You don't have to use 100%. You can also say 50% and save that and refresh. And you can see that's right in the middle. So if I wanted to center this thing directly in the middle, I could say 50%, 50%, and it would be perfectly in the middle of this box. And I can also use the values, the keyword values, center, center. Save and refresh, and it'll also place it in the middle. So keywords or values, or lastly, finally, I can use pixels. So I can say something like 100 pixels, and let's just do 10 pixels. And save that and refresh. And you can see that offset is always first from the left side. So it's 100% from the left, and it's 10 down from the top. So I can use hard pixel values if I need to position it in a specific location, those keywords or those percentages. The last thing I wanna show you with this background is how to do this tag with CSS shorthand. So to do this all on one line, I can simplify all this code and there is a shorthand property here I can just call background. And the first value here is going to be the color if I wanted one. I'll just do that in hexadecimal. I'll just say um, 00FF00. So this is RGB, so that's red, green, blue. So this is actually gonna be a green color. And the next value here is the URL. So I'll just copy and paste this one as well. So I'll copy this, paste it there. The third value here is the position. So I'll set this equal to center, center. And the last value here is the repeating nature and I'll set this equal to no dash repeat. Now let's save and refresh this and it's green, it's in the center and you can see that I can do all of these properties on one single line with the CSS shorthand by just simply calling background. CSS3 introduces quite a few new nifty options to work with background images. In CSS2, which is what we're using here, you're only allowed to specify one image per element. So this div can only have one background image. However, with CSS3, I can specify multiple images inside of one div. So I could have three or four background images and I can layer those. You're also able to size images. With CSS3, I can take that background image and stretch it or shrink it. And I can clip the background image with CSS3. So I do have quite a few new properties and we'll look at those in some of the more advanced CSS series later on.